Alright, so as everybody knows, I've been making a bunch of videos talking about the possibility of the NFA being tore down. And I had a lot of questions on what exactly would happen. A lot of them focused around the price of their machine gun, but there was other questions as well. So we're just going to go over them real quick, systematically. Number one, so what would happen to your pre-86 machine gun should the NFA get torn down? And the reason I think it's going to get torn down is because it was a bad law made for really bad reasons. I explained in depth in this video right here. Anyway, the price of something comes down to two factors, supply and demand. If you change one of the two, well, the price changes. Because a pre-86 machine gun is a collectible, they truly, truly are, what's going to happen if you get rid of the NFA, you're going to open up the market to a whole bunch of people that normally wouldn't buy it. So basically, the demand is going to go through the roof. So are you likely to see the price tank on those? No, absolutely not. You're actually likely to see the price go significantly up because it's going to open the market to a whole bunch of people. Now, because of the price of them, the market's still limited because you pretty much have to be rich to buy one. The point is, if you do see a price significant, if you do see a price drop, I, well, I don't think you're going to, but it would just be for a minute while people are trying to figure out what's going on with the NFA, and then the price would go back up because there'd be a whole bunch more collectors interested in that particular firearm that weren't interested before because they had no interest in doing a bunch of paperwork and getting their tax stamp. The next one. So if the NFA gets dropped, what are there going to be machine guns everywhere? Is that what's going to happen? Can you just go and buy a machine gun the next day on a 44-73, a silencer, short barrel rifle, whatever? Well, unfortunately, now I had two different quotes. Somewhere between 35 and 37 states are the only ones that don't already have state laws prohibiting machine guns. Because remember, the NFA is relati relatively new. As a matter of fact, it was made in my lifetime. Not the NFA, but the prohibition on firearms that happened in 1986. Before, you just had to get a $200 tax stamp. Then in 1986, they're like, no, no more. That happened in my lifetime. That's how new that is that you can't have a new manufactured machine gun. So that's not long ago at all. So most of the states that didn't want to have machine guns already have laws in place that prevent you from having machine guns. As a matter of fact, one of the only NFA restrictions we have here in Wisconsin is on machine guns. That was actually the whole point of me getting my SOT so machine gun laws wouldn't apply to me. But then in one of the sickest cosmic jokes ever, the day I get my SOT license, there's a ginormous ammunition shortage, so it made no sense to make a machine gun, and then, well, we know how the rest of the story went. So even if they got rid of the NFA here in Wisconsin, you couldn't get machine guns right away. They'd have to get rid of the NFA, then they'd have to sue the state, get rid of their state laws, and then finally you could. Because Wisconsin has this weird, very hard to understand and or follow state law on machine guns. So even without the NFA, machine guns still wouldn't exist here in Wisconsin for quite a while. Because this is something that's really new. It just happened very recently, within my lifetime. So if you live in one of those states, that's your normal suspects, California, New York, etc. No, you will not be able to buy a machine gun, silencer, a short barrel rifle, any of that crap tomorrow. Uh, the state laws would ultimately get challenged, but that takes a long time. So let's say the NFA was dissolved today, or repealed depending on which course of action it takes. It'll still be 5, maybe 10, even possibly 20 years before you can get machine guns in those particular states because it would take time to go through the court system and get them to pull back down on their laws. But basically, if the NFA was gone, it would be the st state's choice how they want to regulate a particular firearm, and that's the way it should be. The next question, what about the 4473? I mean, obviously that falls under the same characteristics of the NFA. Is that going to fall right after the NFA? I don't believe so. I believe that we're just not ready to make that step at this point in time. Yes, the NFA, we are totally ready to make that step. Again, it was a bad law made for bad reasons. And I feel we are at the point, the tipping point, where we're ready to take that away. Now, the 4473, that might be taken away in our grandkids or a great, great, great grandkids lifetime. But I just don't think we're ready to make that leap at this point in time. But it will ultimately be made because it's a useless piece of paper that does nothing. I should probably add in there what a lot of people's fear is with getting rid of gun laws. And that is that 
some ex-murderer will get out of prison and now he'll be able to get a gun legally and be able to commit crimes. One, every crime he would commit with it is already illegal. Two, if he's not safe enough to be on the street with all of his rights, why in the shit is he out of prison in the first place? The only thing the 4473 does is create criminals. As a matter of fact, in 1992, I couldn't find a recent study because nobody wants to do a study and put this information out there. That or I'm just using bad Google search terms. But from 1980 to 1992, 10% roughly of all federal cases, they involved a gun, no other crime whatsoever, but the person put on the stock when there wasn't supposed to be a stock, had a barrel that was too long or too short, made a machine gun, made a silencer. The point is, the only crime they committed was a gun crime. That's 10% going through the legal system. It, was, it went all the way up and it spiked in 2014 and then it came down a little bit. A lot of people in prison right now are there for breaking no other law than a gun law. That's ridiculous. The 4473 doesn't stop any crime whatsoever from happening. All the gun laws, the crimes you can commit with them are already illegal. Murder, illegal. Threatening a person with a firearm, illegal. There's no crime you can commit with a gun that is not already illegal. Therefore, it's a fact. The gun laws do nothing but make more criminals. And not only do they make more criminals, it's a victim and list crime, obviously, which I don't understand why you would have a law for victimless, victimless crime because to the best of my understanding, the whole point of a law is so a victim has repercussions they can take on somebody that has harmed them, either physically or financially. That's just an avenue they can take to be able to punish that person. To put a law in place to say you're going to prevent crime is just ridiculous. That makes no sense whatsoever. You only put in like a precog law if you're trying to make criminals. Again, reference this video, they were trying to make criminals. That was literally their intent, to make criminals out of a particular group of people. And that's all the gun laws were for. Because you can't stop, you can't stop the criminal. I mean, what are you going to do? Like, suspect somebody and lock them up for the rest of their life? No, you can't do that. There's no gun law on the books that will ever prevent, ever, and I mean that ever prevent any crime. Look at what happened in Japan. The point is, so they get entered into the legal system, 10%. So if you got rid of the 4473 NFA shit like that, the prison population would automatically drop by 10%. And it gets worse than that because they call the, the prison system school for criminals. It's just criminals teaching other criminals how to do things. When people go in there, they typically come out as a career criminal. Because they have a felony now, and they can no longer have the ability to be a productive member in society, they go to criminal school and they learn how to cheat the system. And after that point, why even try? They just cheat the system and they make what little life they have left enjoyable as possible by lying, cheating, and stealing. Because they learned how to do it really, really good in the prison system. So, just to recap, the NFA disappears tomorrow? No. The price of your pre-86 firearms will not drop. Now, I don't have a crystal ball. They might, and there might be some factor I'm missing, but I believe that it will open up a market to a whole bunch of people, and the price will actually go up. No, they're not going to be machine guns and that everywhere in all different states. What you will probably see is an increase in silencers, which, contrary to movies... They're not assassins walking around, you know, just giving these little breasts, these little whispers in the middle of the night assassinating people. No, you'll probably see more silencers because it's good for your ears. It's really good for hunting too. Short barrel rifles and shotguns, obviously, because they're awesome for home defense. And you can maneuver through your house really easy with a shorter, more compact firearm. You will see some increase in machine guns because they are essential to having a functioning militia. You need machine guns if you're going to have a militia. That's just the way it is. Because in a team sense, a machine gun works really good. As a lone person, the only good a machine gun does is for retreating to get their head down and run away. But because of the limited ammunition you can have on you, there's no tactical advantage to having a machine gun unless you're in a team setting or you want to retreat. So a militia is an excellent place where a machine gun should be. 
or like in the U.S. military, something like that. Most police officers don't even use machine guns, even though they could, because as a lone person, there's not much of a tactical advantage. 4473s would most definitely be next on the chopping block, and we will see reduction in criminals. We will be making less criminals and less crime by getting rid of the NFA and the 4473. Anyway, hope you enjoyed this video and found it educational. If you'd like to help support the channel, got my Patreon right there. I also have affiliate links in the description down below. Just by clicking on those links, even if you don't purchase what that particular link is for, just clicking on it and doing the Amazon shopping you were already going to do anyway, and I'll kick back for it because you came there off my channel. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe.